carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, family, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Miss Gloria Cabello. Just before we get started, we're going to ask that everybody that's in the room, I know you're very important people and you're busy people, but in respect for the family, if you have cell phones, do me a favor, take them out now, put them on vibrate or silent. We don't want you to, to disturb the service, please, and thank you. So we just ask everybody to do that. All right, and after everyone has done that, can we just give a round of applause and thank God for the life of Miss Gloria Cabello? Amen. Um, at this time, we're going to move forward. I, I know it says selections, but my name is Pastor Oliver. I'm from Trinity Memorial Baptist Church, and I do a very good job of not following the program. <laughs> Amen. So I don't want anybody to be disappointed or mad with me. I do a good job of not following the program. There will be a selection. We're going to get to it in a minute. But at this time, we're going to have the Old Testament and New Testament reading by Stacy Williams. Amen. 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 First, I'll be coming from Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, followed by John 11, 25 and 26. Ecclesiastes 7, 12 and 17. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And God's word is blessed. Amen. 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 We thank God for the reading of the word. Let us pray. Father, we give you honor and we give you glory. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the life of Miss Gloria Cabello. And Father, we thank you right now for this moment to not just celebrate God, we don't come to celebrate that she died, but God, we come to celebrate that she lived and the lives that she has touched while she has been here. Father, we pray now that as we move into this service, oh God, that you would be here and have your way. Most of all, God, we pray right now that you would continue to touch this family, oh God, and comfort their grieving hearts. Father, we thank you for her life and God, what she has meant to us. And God, just give us the strength to continue on in the days to come. Father, we thank you for every family member and every friend that has traveled from near and far just to be here to celebrate this life today. We thank you, we love you, and we trust you. Certainly can't do without you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Now we're going to have uh, the tribute from Miss Gloria Ford. After that, the obituary will be read by Sabrina Cabello, and then we'll have the selection. All right? Y'all right. clap your hands for her as she comes in. <laughs> in the Lord. And, um, I had her 63 years and she had me. And for that, I am totally, totally grateful. We could go on and on and talk about my mom because there are some stories that we all share in here. And um, I'm not doing that today. I basically just want to thank God for her life. I want to thank my family who 
one of the strongest villages I know, and my dear friends. But I also want to say how we live our lives that God gives to us. That God gives to us. Comes with responsibilities. And people say, well, we don't come with instructions. We do. We come to love because he loved us. And that's basically what it's all about. With all the things that's going on in life, and people say, oh, we got to stop meeting like this. Oh, we going to meet like this. All the time. All the time. So, I just want to give you a little encouragement. Have your business in order. When we go on vacations, we pick up brochures, we go here, there, and there, and everywhere. Take time and pick up these brochures because this is a trip we all got to take. Have your business in order. This is McCall's. This is uh, Raymond Frost. But there's so many funeral homes, just as many as it is liquor stores. There's funeral homes. And we all got to take that trip. Put your reservation in. Prepare. He prepared a place for us. So we got to do that next step. Prepare. Have your preparation. Have your business in order. No disrespect to anyone or know what you're going to But this is knowledge that we have to do this. It's our responsibility. Not to ourselves, but to our loved ones. It's, it's hard, but it's fear. And we have to do it. And I hope that, you know, if you don't have your business in order, get it in order. Get it in order. Don't do it to your family. Don't do it to your friends. It's not they tab to pick up. Y'all have a blessed day in the Lord. And thank you once again. Obituary. Uh, Gloria L. Cabello, the daughter of the late Johnny and Ruth Diggs, was born on July 19, 1932, at Fordham Hospital in the Bronx, New York, moving to Harlem a few years later. Gloria was the second oldest of 22 children. She had 17 siblings proceed before her in death. Gloria was educated through the New York City public school system. At an early age, she learned to sew and cook and started making her own clothes. She loved helping out with her younger siblings. Gloria met Angelo Cabello and later married him on December 10, 1950. Five children came of this union. Gloria worked various jobs, and ending at Alexander's department store to become a full-time housewife and mother. Gloria had much love for her children, but was a firm believer in spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> she was full of love and gave wisdom to all she cared for. Gloria loved to travel and did it well, whether, it's with, whether it was with her sisters or her children. The casinos were her place to be, especially with For the Hard Way, which was Bunny, Barbara, Penny, and my grandmother Gloria, which the others are her sisters. Her celebration was li of life was all events with her family, creating beautiful memories to God be, be the glory. Gloria Cabello is survived by her sisters Barbara, Ruth, which is our Penny, 
Stephanie and her brother John, also known as Chip. Her two daughters, Paula and Gloria, also known as Mari. Gloria's husband, George. Her bonus children, Hector and Stephen. Grandchildren are Antonia, Sabrina, her husband Darnell, Juanita, her husband Lawrence, Shireen, her husband Ian, and Latora. Bonus grandchildren are Stacy, Christian, Winter, Pavan, Tabitha. Her great grandchildren are Latricia, Dwayne, Taloya, David, Donnell, Michael, Deshay, Danielle, Darnell, Gabrielle, Lauren, Anaya, John, Lance, Donovan, and Isaiah. She was blessed to have great great grandchildren which is Derek, Dwayne Jr., Araya, David Jr., Kumari, Dylan, Evan, Devin, and a host of nieces, nephews, and cousins. She was preceded in death by her husband, Angelo Cabello, two sons, Angelo and Tyrone, her daughter, Anita, her granddaughter, Angela, and her dear friend, Pauline Johnson. Thank you. Amen. Can we clap our hands one more time? Amen. For that wonderful amen. For the tributes and for the obituaries. Amen. We thank God for what her life represented. Amen. I was asked to do something and I'm going to try my best to do it. Amen. Uh, song says one day at a time. Amen. Lord, for my sake, 
take one day at a time. Lord, for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Lord, for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. Clap your hands if you want God to give you the strength to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for one day at a time. Yes. Is there anybody in here that you want to see many, many more days, but you just want God just to help you make it through this day? Just clap your hands and let's get going. Brothers and sisters, I thank God for the opportunity to stand before you. There are other people that could have been chosen, but I thank and praise God because this is an opportunity for me to. Uh, show my love for this family by being here. And we come today to remember this young lady. Somebody say young lady. Young, young, lady. young lady. Amen. Somebody say why. I say young because not too many people get to live to see 91. Amen. That's a blessing Amen. within itself. Amen. We ought to clap our hands and give God glory. Somebody say, Pastor, you don't know Miss Gloria Cabello. And I do. How do I know her? First off, she's connected to me through family. There's some family, there's a granddaughter of hers that I knew before I knew her. Amen. Amen. Then she's connected to me through family again because someone who attends my church, this is her mother. So that's family again. Somebody said, Pastor, but that's still not you knowing the person. Let me help you. The life that we live Believe it or not, there are sponges that absorb how we are, especially parent to children. Children pick up a lot of what they see their parents do, whether you know it or not. I didn't have to know her personally, but just to know some of her offspring. As a matter of fact, not only does her daughter go to a church, to our church, but her brother also goes to our church. So I don't have to know her personally, but when you can look at the offspring that she has, you can tell what's in a person or about a person just by the people that come under and after her. Why are you saying that? We need to focus on what kind of legacy we are leaving. Some of us, all we are known for is to turn up. When that party comes, we know this person is going to make that party jump. We go, this person is the life of the party. But what else will you be known for? <coughs> Sister Gloria tapped a little bit into what I had to say this morning. And I'm going to give you the scripture and I'm going to get out of your way because I realize that we have time um, that we have to meet. But the scripture I'm going to leave with you this morning comes from John chapter... 14, beginning at verse 1. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Glory was tapping into my message when she talked about picking up brochures. There's one brochure I want to tell you that you need to pick up. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. 
and whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. And I want to stop reading right there. Sister Gloria tapped a little bit into about this theme that God gave me, making my reservations, making my reservations. I really think she was reading my notes when she said, when we go on vacation, we take time to scope out where we're going. We even look at the reviews, how many stars the hotels have, what's the thread count on the sheet, how long it's going to take to get there, how much it's going to cost to get there. And we make plans. If we really want to go someplace, we make plans and we make reservations. We put something on it. Somebody said put a deposit on it. We make reservations with anticipation that we're going to be able to make it to this place that we're planning to go. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. I don't just like to stay home, but I like to go away. You get to see some things. You get to enjoy some different things. And it's good to get away sometime. But as we plan for the vacations of our life, we also have to make reservations for after this life. How many people can lift their hand and say, I'm making reservations for after this life? You're going to ask the question, preacher, how do I make reservations for after this life? First of all, there is no cost associated with this reservation because Jesus already paid that price. Oh yeah. Anybody here believe that Jesus already paid that price? Jesus already paid that price. You can go on Google, Google flights, cheap flights, whatever you want. You won't catch an airplane to this destination. How many people know you can't catch an airplane to this destination? As a matter of fact, the only way that you can make reservations is through by Jesus Christ. Somebody said, how do I make that reservation? You have to get to know him. Some people say, Pastor, I ain't got time for all of that church business. Okay. That's all right. That's between you and the master. Somebody said, I ain't got time to be in church for three hours a Sunday, two hours a Sunday, whatever the case may be. Funny thing is, God will allow you to work 40, 45, 50 hours a week, but you won't give him two hours of your time. Some of us have been fortunate enough because of the pandemic, we got so used to sitting on the couch and watching church from home. then some of us won't even do that. Watching church from home is sometimes like watching a glass fireplace or a picture of a fireplace. You can't really feel the fire, but you're looking at it. How do we get to this place? You have to, whether you show up to the building or not, whether you know all of the scriptures in the Bible or not, you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people that show up to the building. A lot of people got the word underneath their arm. A lot of people know the word from Revelations to Genesis. But how many people actually have a relationship with him? Jesus is saying here in his only word, in his own words in John 14, he's saying, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, people who have a relationship with him, watch this, Understand that, number one, heaven is a prepared place. In making this reservation, you've got to understand this is a prepared place. It's prepared for you. It's prepared for you and I. The question is, do we want to go there? As it is a prepared place for you and I, the question is, are we prepared for it? As God is preparing something for you, he also is preparing you for it. But guess what? Some of us haven't taken the opportunity to get prepared. God has already prepared this place. How? By sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Without the cross, there would be no forgiveness. Without forgiveness, there would be no place 
in heaven for you and for me. Brothers and sisters, it would be easy. Some of you might want to hear me stand here and say that Miss Gloria Cabello made it into heaven. Some might want to sit here and listen and say that she made it someplace else. It's not for me to determine where she ended. But it is for me to determine or try to have a say so in where I will spend eternity. And not only that, but speak to those of you who are still here that you still have time to make your reservation. Since Gloria talked about picking up these brochures, but I got another brochure and there's nothing like it. It's the best-selling brochure in the world today, and that is the Holy Bible. It's the Word of God. Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Sister Gloria said, we don't come in instruction manuals. We don't, but God does. He gives us how we can have relationship with him, not only with him. Guess what? In reading the word of God, once we learn how to have relationship with him, then we can have relationship with each other. I heard the word love mentioned, but how can we know what love truly is except you know Jesus and his love? Heaven is a prepared place. Second thing I saw is that he promised a return. He promised a return. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He said, and I will come back. He didn't say I might. He said, I will come back and receive you unto myself. I don't know about you. I'm not looking to leave anytime soon, but I look forward to Jesus' return. How many people look forward to Jesus' return? Some of us on the day that Miss Cabello passed away, those of us here in New York and in the tri-state area might have experienced a little turbulence. They might have experienced the earthquake. How many people were here for that? You experienced the earthquake and some people were saying, oh my God, what's going on? Because guess what? In my lifetime at least, I've never known an earthquake to happen here in New York. Some of you might have experienced it, not me. I've never seen that earthquake. I, I've seen it, heard about it, read about it in other places like California and things like that, but I've never myself experienced the earthquake. I was reading social media and some people were being funny, even some family members of mine. They said, Lord, if that's you, let me put my wig on first. <laughs> And I wanted to answer that person back, but I waited till I got home. I said, I got news for you. Wig or no wig, it doesn't change your destination. <laughs> that just helped me to know that many people, when they're making their reservations to go on their trips and on their vacations, they got to get the fit. They got to get the fit. How many people know they got to get the fit? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the outfit. <laughs> You going on a seven day vacation and you got five bathing suits. Tell me why. <laughs> tell me, tell me why. It's the same water. <laughs> tell me why. Who in here knows that sometimes you pack more clothes than you wear when you go on vacation? We are so concerned about how we look when we go and take these trips. But guess what? This trip, God is not concerned if you're dressed in white or red. He's concerned about what inside looks like. I told you it's a prepared place for prepared people, a promised return. God wants to see what your heart looks like. What that means is, guess what? We are not perfect. How many people can lift their hands and say, I'm not perfect? I'm not perfect. Now, while you lift your hands and say, I'm not perfect, guess what? That is not a license to continue in your mess. We got to try our best every day to get better, to get better. Instead of becoming old fools, we got to get wiser in our older age. Because we just never know when our flight might be caught. How do we get wiser? Some of the mistakes that you uh, uh, have been through or have made, don't count it as a loss. Count it as a lesson learned. There you go. Man. How many people can say, I'm not going back that way no more. I'm not going back that way. <laughs> We got to make some decisions in our life to make good choices. 
And then when I make bad choices, God, it's not the end. Thank you for allowing me to learn that lesson, but help me to move forward so I don't make that same mistake all over again because heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. But now is the time to make your reservation. Now is the time to pick up your brochure. You cannot read the brochure when you're standing or when you're laying in the front of the church, in the front of the chapel. You can't read your brochure. Some of us got the Bible app or could get it on our phone and get it for free and we still won't download it because we ain't got enough space for everything else that we want in our phone. Now is the time. It's a prepared place for prepared, prepared people. Promise return and guess what? You want to know what airline you're going to fly on? It's not Delta. It's not Breeze. It's not Spirit. <laughs> It's not none of them other ones. The only way you're going to get there is by flying Air Jesus. Guess what? His flights are never canceled. God help me. His flights are never canceled, and his flights are never delayed. How many of y'all ever been delayed out on flight? <laughs> And you had to wait and to wait. Can I tell y'all something? Sister Gloria said it to y'all earlier. This is a trip everybody's going to make. And there is no hold up, wait a minute, I'm not ready yet. No, ready or not, here he comes. I'll just catch the night flight. No, you won't. <laughs> I'll just give my ticket to somebody else. <laughs> Let them buy my ticket and I'll wait for the next one. You know, I can make some change off this ticket. No, you can't. Not on this flight. I don't like sitting by the window. I don't like sitting in the aisle because that cart be bumping people when it comes through. I don't want to sit in the middle because I ain't got no armrest and I don't want people crossing over me to go to the bathroom. This flight, your seat is custom made for you. This flight, some of us might be begging for something cool to drink on this flight. <laughs> Y'all gonna catch me in a minute. <laughs> some of the beverages we think we gonna have on this flight, swipe, swipe, we gonna get whatever we want. No, no. You're going to get what you deserve on this flight. Holy Ghost is the stewardess that's going to welcome you to this flight. The person flying the plane is going to come over the radio and say, this is the weather forecast. This is the destination. And guess what? On this flight, you can't run off and say, no, I got the wrong flight. This ain't for me. I can't go here. No, you go. But my question to you, what is your final destination? When the earthquake came, the first part, I missed it. I was here. I missed it. The only way I knew it was happening was because so, so many people were texting my phone. You all right? I said, why? There's an earthquake just happened. Really? It's not because I was being naive, but guess what? As a child of God, when you experience certain things, certain turbulences, you don't get shaken or disturbed because you know this is the will of God concerning our lives. How many people sitting here right now really don't like funerals? How many people can be honest? You really don't like funerals. You really don't like funerals. Guess what? Dying is as much a part of life as living is. You don't like attending them, but guess what? Someday, somebody might have to attend yours. And it doesn't matter how beautiful the casket is, how beautiful you shop on the inside. But that still doesn't determine your destiny. You can buy a $10,000 casket if you want. Spend all that money and put it in the ground. It still don't determine where you're going. You just got a beautiful casket. Y'all get the beautiful headstone with the picture on it and everything. <laughs> One thing a heaven uh, headstone would never tell you is whether they spend a life in heaven or hell. 
on that headstone will have some dates. And on that headstone, in between the dates, is a dash. You ever see anything on that dash? No. Guess what? How you live right now is the dash. Everything that you do now determines where you'll spend eternity. So I want to tell everybody here today, I'm closing now. It's good to look good, but it's better to be good. I'm not telling anybody to walk around here ragged. If you walk around here ragged, that's no problem. <laughs> but the time and the money that we invest are getting nails done, you got the tarantulas on, you got the lace front, you got everything, you hooked. Somebody just look at somebody and say, you look good, you look good, you look good. Come on, turn to the person next to you and say, you look good, you look good, you look good. You look good, yes, you look good. Now what? You look good, but where are you going? I got to get myself together because I got some place to go. And I'm praying when I get there, I see everyone I know. I want to go heaven. Want to go? Yeah, we all want to go. She said, "Can you picture a place where there's a smile on every face?" Yes, I can picture. Tell me how to get there. Then it said, "None but the perfect." It said, "None but the righteous shall see God." How many people have a relationship with Him already? That's the first part of your reservation. Name. He don't care. When I say name, guess what? He don't care if you're a bishop. He don't care if you're an elder, an apostle, a deacon. He don't care what your title is. He want to know if you have a relationship with him. I'm the eldest of the family. You got to respect me. Mm -hmm. Tell that to Jesus. Because <laughs> he's no respecter of person. I want when my day comes for the Savior to say, well done, I want to leave here knowing there's a place prepared for me. Now, which place you get? You want the one with air condition or you want the one where it's summer all the time? Mm -hmm. Times 10. Some of y'all start fanning when y'all came in here. <laughs> oh, hell is a lot hotter. And some folks don't like to mention that, but I'm going to be truthful. Y'all say Hades, and we say universe and all this other stuff. No, it's two destinations. I found that in the brochure that I read. It's two places. One is heaven, and one is hell. Which one you going to? Brothers and sisters, let's take time and make our reservations. Do it today. Don't wait. I got to wait till my tax money come in. <laughs> so I can make my reservation. My next check, I got a bonus coming. I got a bonus coming. Y'all wait on that bonus and you might not live to see that bonus. But now is the time. Today is the day. Make your reservation. <coughs> yes, it's important to have your business fixed. Yes, as the Gloria said it. Don't put that strain on your family. But guess what? Don't put the strain on your soul where you're going to spend eternity. Get your business fixed today. Tell folk, I heard Brother John said this, tell folk you love them today. Yes, it is sad that some of us, the only time we meet and see each other and talk to each other is at an occasion like this. That still don't top, stop us from saying, I love you. That don't stop us from saying, forgive us to the people that we wrong. That don't stop us from saying, I'm sorry. That don't stop us from saying, I love you. In my closing, I'm done. I am grateful to see this family the way they took care of their mother. I wasn't there for every second, but I just like this fact. Maybe almost a year ago, last year, doctors said what they wanted to say. How many people know God is in charge of the doctor? Amen. Doctor said what they want to say. Now, when your business is fixed, and when you believe what you believe, and you know what you know, 
You don't go into a panic. Watch this. I need everybody in here that's not family. Can y'all do me a favor and applaud this family for the care that they gave to Mr. Bell? I know folks get mad when I say this, but I got to say it. A mother can have multiple children and take care of them all, but them all children can't take care of their mother. It is a blessing to see how this family took care of their mother. I mean rotation. I mean meals. I mean there wasn't no put them in a nursing home or anything like that. To my knowledge, there was no nursing home. To my knowledge, you had children and grandchildren rotating to make sure that she was all right. Two things I'm going to say about that. Number one, it speaks of her life that she lived. To all of us in this room, you better be careful how you treat people. Because one day you might need somebody to take care of you. Some of y'all panicking right now because you treated somebody wrong, you treated your children wrong, and boy, if you should ever need help, you gonna be in trouble. Some of y'all going home right now to talk to your children. You know I so love you. Don't you put me in no nursing home. Don't you mistreat me. I use this joke, I always tell my children, I answer my children, yes sir and yes ma'am. Because that's the respect that I want them to give me. Not only that, watch this. God forbid if I ever get old and I ever have to use a chair, I don't want them to push me down the hill with no brakes. <laughs> so number one, it speaks to the life that she lived. And number two, it speaks to the life that you live. It takes a lot to work, have your own family, but still want to care for your loved one. <laughs> and no matter how long you've had them, nobody wants to see them go. But you can hold your head up high and say, I did the best I could by my mother. So Cabello family, I applaud you today, all of you. I don't know each and every detail. But I applaud you today for the care that you gave your mother. Now it doesn't just stop with her. Now, take care of yourself, please. I know there's a few people in here that need to hear that. And I ain't call no names or point no fingers. I'm just going to look. <laughs> take care of yourself and take care of each other. Family is all we got in this world. Money will come, money will go. Friends will come, friends will go. Family ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and each other. If you need help and how to do that, I present to you Jesus. He will help you. In everything, there's instructions in that Bible for everything. So make your reservations now if you want to make that trip. Amen? Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Let's give God glory. To everyone that's in the room today, I always say this. Don't tell a funeral lie. Funeral lie is, if you need me, <laughs> call. After today, after today is over, there's going to be some moments. But some people, guess what? It hasn't hit them yet. We here at the service, you looking at the casket, you have the obituary in your hand, but it hasn't hit yet. Yes, God has given us the strength, but let me encourage you. There's going to be some moments that's going to sneak up on you. You're going to be in the supermarket. You're going to be eating a certain dish. Mommy used to make this like this. You're going to see somebody disciplining their child. And you're going to say, mommy, 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 grandma. Don't tell the funeral line, say, if you need me, call me. No, how about we reverse that? How about we anticipate the needs of others? Because, see, it's their turn today, and it might be your turn today also. 
Let me help you. You don't want to make the family sad twice, so if cooking ain't your thing, <laughs> leave it alone. Let somebody else do the cooking. You bring the silverware or something. <laughs> but if cooking ain't your thing, leave it alone. You don't want to upset the family more than one time. And notice my big self talking about food. <laughs> Wrap your arms around each other. Sometimes don't call and say, girl, I remember when my mama died. No two situations are the same. And everybody's relationship is different. Sometimes when you go to a funeral, it makes you flash back to your love. Remember them in your prayers. The best thing you can do for them, even when you can't call them, the best thing you can do is pray for them. Amen? Amen. Take a little time. FaceTime, text message, call them. I'm just thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Right? And do me a favor. Stop telling people, you need to get over it. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as you need to get. If you didn't love your mama, that's your business. <laughs> and I don't care how long ago it happened. For some people, it's that pain is still fresh. Have a little sympathy for other people. Just pray for them. Even when you can't understand them. Sometimes all they're going to need is a person just to listen to them. Don't interrupt them. Just listen to them. And God will be pleased with us. Amen? Amen. At this time, the funeral director is coming. I pray that I moved in an expeditious manner so that we can make our appointment on time. Amen. 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 Everyone, we'd like to thank um, Pastor Oliver for that lovely message that he gave. Please remember, he said the B I B L E, which was Bible instructions before leaving earth. We need to keep up with that and hold on to each other and call each other as well as call it on Jesus and pray for each every one. Um, at this time, Gloria Cabello family would like to thank everyone that took the time to share the celebration of her life. And we will be going to Fairlawn Cemetery in Jersey, and we need to try to get to our vehicles so that we can get there in a timely fashion as well. Um, there is no viewing, but praise God that we are together and we get there safe and get back safe. If anyone needs a sticker, you can get one from the office or in the hallway at the table. There are some for your vehicle. Once again, Gloria Calabello family would like to thank everyone who took this time to share your thoughts, your feelings, your words, or your presence. It's very important and still try to stay in touch with each other because the mourning period is just beginning. And the McCall's Bronxwood funeral would like to thank every, you all for entrusting them for the care of your loved one. Once again, we thank you and we will be leaving as soon as possible. Thank you all again. Have a great day. Thank you. 
Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good.